The views and opinions expressed on any programme are those of the producers and or the persons appearing on the programme and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of FRC Media, Bristol Community College or the City of Fall River. Good morning. Welcome to Spindle City Straight Talk. I'm Chip. I'm CJ. And I'm Nisa. And okay. what a day is going to start today. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> let me begin first by addressing a few little issues that we discussed before about this is Spindle City Straight Talk. The reason this show was, was developed was to allow us to talk straight about the politics in Fall River and give us adequate time to speak about that. And the reality is that we do a panel show, and a panel show is a good show. We cover a lot of topics. But we don't have enough time to sufficiently cover these topics. And this show was developed as, a, as not only a, uh, a source of news, but a source of education and a source of political commentary. And if some people are not happy with the, with the fact that some people will take a little bit of extra time, well, that's their problem, because the fact is the same people are complaining about being stifled at the city council meeting and being restricted to three minutes. The reality is that we have people on this show who have uh, varying degrees of experience in, in varying fields. I have been involved. Well, I was elected president of Firefighters Union in 1981. I've been dealing with mayors, councilors, congressmen, and state representatives and, and state senators for 34 years, so, and I've learned from history. So if I'm commenting and I'm taking time, that's fine. If CJ's talking about an issue that he's an expert in, fine, or he's uh, discussing an issue that he has. Nisa is new, she's doing homework, she's getting up to speed pretty well, and when we talk about Providence, she will have the floor, because <laughs> I, don't, I can't name one Providence city councilor. I know who the mayor is, I know who the former mayor is. But that's the reason this show was developed. So if you don't like it, tough. You know? <laughs> so, and with that, let me, let me begin with something that I think is very, very important. The, the, well, it's a flat out lie. And it obviously, it hits home with me and with CJ, who was the, who was the notary public who took the, who signed the original, uh, affidavit that initiated the recall. Um, it seems as though one of Mayor Sutter's campaign managers, uh, Catherine Alexander, posted her, I guess, resume, uh, you know, her profile or whatever you want to call it, online. And she, she says she is a political strategist at uh, Consi Sincati Strategies. And I will read you, and this is not a, this is not, this is a, this is verbatim from that. It says, campaign manager, committee to elect Sam Sutter for mayor, November 2014 through December 2014. Quote, successfully recalled seated mayor and elected district attorney Sam Sutter as Fall River mayor, unquote. That is a flat out lie. That is a flat out lie. As the designated spokesman for the campaign, I challenge Ms. Alexander to name what lawyers were called and interviewed for the position, who the lawyer was that sat in front of the election board, who was, what was the name of the lawyer that went to court. And it's, it is an insult to all those people who stood long before November, by the way, because uh, I don't remember the exact month the first meeting occurred at the Elks Hall, but it was in the summer. So this recall didn't happen between November and December. It ended between November and December, but it began a long time. And there were many, many, many hours of people standing in parking lots, securing the signatures to get this recall going. There were many hours of people sitting in someone's kitchen collating data preparing for the legal arguments. 
and it's an insult to all those people who worked so hard. There were people that stood out there with signs and demonstrated for the recall. There were people who took severe abuse, and I took a little, but CJ took more, but, uh, <laughs> you know, they took severe abuse during the recall, all to exercise their rights under this government to change government. And for this individual to lie, I mean, if this is the kind of campaign he's running, and this is the person who's running it, she, I mean, she, she flat out lied on her, on her resume or, or her profile. She had absolutely nothing to do with the recall. If any of you recall, if I were the, a recaller, which I am, I, you could just write a letter to, to the place she works for and protest this. Because the fact is, this is wrong. This is absolutely wrong. It's an insult to the work you did and the, and, and the literally hundreds, hundreds of hours spent by people. They took time out of their regular lives, their daily lives, left their children at home to stand with a petition or go door to door with a petition to go to court to do the data uh, computation for the court. And as I said, I want to know what other lawyers we called besides the lawyer we did hire. I want to know how many, you know, what parking lot she stood in and, and with with which one of the recalls was she standing with because it didn't happen and this again I will read successfully recalled seated mayor you did nothing to recall mayor Flanagan absolutely nothing and if you lied about this now I know why Sam says that 19 out of 20 people wanted the tax increase <laughs> Now I know why he said the reason that the, that the, uh, that the pension fund is, is in such trouble is because people live longer. All of them half-truths, but this is not a half-truth. This is a 100% lie, and that's all I've got to say about that. Well, you know, Chip, I understand what you're saying, and I'm not defending uh, Ms. Alexander, but she's a political strategist, and we know that it's all in marketing. And in marketing, you got to make yourself look good and look the best so that you can get your next client. But, you know, a lot of people were offended by that. And there's more that was uh, contained in her resume that people were taking great offense at. Um, and that's left for another, another day. Well, but, no, I'm not going to leave for another day because i got to respond to that. I don't, you know, you're not defending her, but in a way you are defending her because you know something? This is one of the problems with America. We think that, that politicians and anybody attached to a politician has, has the right, the right to lie. Well, and, and, and this is a lie. Yeah, but the this, thing this is, is not, this is not an embellishment. Right. You know, if she said that she took part in it, it might have been an embellishment because she walked by or she, she knew of the recall. But when you say that you, you successfully recalled the mayor, that you had an integral part that you imply this, and this is what's wrong, that number one, slander and libel rules don't apply to politicians, number one, that it's taken for granted that politicians can lie to us. How can we expect honest government when, the, when we are told that we're supposed to accept crap like this? Mm -hmm. I'm not saying we accept crap like that, but I will say this, there's a, a, a phrase going around everywhere, and I think right now it's become more prevalent today than ever before here in Fall River, and that is when you lie to the federal government or you lie to the government, you're charged with a felony. Yeah. But when a politician lies to you, it's, it's called, called politics. politics. <laughs> and well, you know, you're that's right. That's my point. Yep. And, and we, we do start have, having to control what is happening with our elected officials. There's no question about it. But um, I, I need to digress for one moment. Um, some people may know, some people may not, but I have to give a shout out today uh, to a very special person in my life, um, my dad, uh, who's currently uh, in the hospital. He was taken out of his home at uh, a little after midnight uh, in uh, severe distress. And he said to me this morning that he's gonna make sure that he's watching 
us on the air. So, Dad, get well fast. We need you home. We know you're a fighter. And uh, if you don't, Emeril Lagasse will get fed up and he'll probably show up with a, a meal you don't want to eat. <laughs> <laughs> well, I second that. Uh, you know, get well. <coughs> Absolutely. <coughs> so, so, so that's it. As it. You know, they get back to that, and, and, you know, that's one of the problems. And the problem is it's more, it's, it, it's more insidious than just politicians. You know, you can expect a politician to, to bend the truth, to tell a half-truth. But when they hire, and she's still his campaign manager for us, when they hire people who do things like this, and, and Sam Sutter, you know, in, in his inauguration, did not take credit for the recall. But I guess he, did, he told a half-truth then because his campaign manager was going to take credit for it. Mm -hmm. But this has got to stop. You know, this is something that, look, the, we the people, you know, this is the thing. These are all rationalizations to say that it's okay. Well, you know, we'll call it politics. No, you call it lying. And I can't, you know, as I said, you know, I can't lie to the IRS without going to jail. And this is what's happened throughout this nation. All you got to do is look at the pharmaceutical companies. And the issue now with the guy who bought out a company is now charging you know, ten thousand dollars a month for a drug that used to call ten used to cost ten thousand dollars a year, and that means life or death to people. And his and his response to that was, "I did it because I could," and and I don't really care. I own the company and I get to set the price. And the you know, Mexico has its drug cartels. And as Bill Ma said on a show I saw, ironically, I flipped it on, and they were talking about this guy. And he said, We have our own cartel in the United States, it's the pharmaceutical cartel. Oh my gosh. And when you read about the, people like this, uh, you know, increasing the, the cost 1200%. And then you look at CVS Caremark charging $44,000 for a prescription. You know, there's something wrong. And there's something innately wrong in the United States when you can go anywhere in the world and buy American drugs cheaper than you can buy American drugs in the United States. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, that's unreal. I, <coughs> I read about that, but I didn't follow up with this gentleman's statement of, um, I did it because I could. Yeah, actually, <laughs> actually. That's not, like, yeah. It's a, it's a well-established drug for the treatment of toxoplasmosis, um, which is a, a parasitic infection of the brain. It affects cancer patients and people with immunocompromised systems. Uh, the drug initially sold for between $13 and $15 a tablet. He raised the price of that drug to over $750 a tablet That's sick. overnight. What he bought the people? company and raised it overnight. And his statement was that we need to do this because we have to fund research into a newer drug that has less side effects. The entire medical industry came out within moments of that statement and said, the drug has been in use for years with no side effects. It is the most effective drug on the market. Anything else they've come out with has been ineffective. So this is a long-standing drug that has been very effective and nobody makes it except for this company, I guess. It's still not being made uh, generically. Uh, but you know, once somebody starts making it generically, and I think, hey, big pharma, here's your opportunity, uh, the price is going to dramatically decrease. But uh, let's move on to the next revisionist history story. It's unreal. Yeah, well, you know, Misa, you know how it is. And I, I mean, it's, it's just getting to be craziness uh, throughout the, uh, the whole situation. It, greed, greed is what is ruining this country. Just well, greed. Fall, Fall River wrote the, the, uh, the, the floor plan for greed. Uh, you know, and the revisionist history that we have shows that. I wrote an article yesterday uh, called The Durfee Debacle. The Durfee Debacle talks about, in 1976, upon the uh, committees to build a new BMC Durfee High School, which many people are familiar with, um, it was suggested that two high schools be built in Fall River. And even one of the school committee candidates for this year, Edward Costar, uh, Costa, however he likes to pronounce it, uh, <laughs> has said that he never supported two high schools. The reason for not supporting two high schools was they said they couldn't support two sports programs. But when the school was built, it opened up to disgrace. It opened up to problems. 
well, let's see, it would rain out and you would have a waterfall down one of the stairwells. Um, temperature variances as much as 10 to 15 degrees throughout the building. Uh, so you could be 100 degrees on one side and 40 below on the other. Uh, and there was huge payoffs, kickbacks, and bribes that were made for the building of this school. F less than 40 years later, we're looking at building a new school because this one's falling apart. This one's been falling apart since day one. And Chip, you remember that? Remember the free Jarabek signs? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's amazing that you had people that, that said you were lying. Because, I know. I mean, this, this was a, I mean, all you got to do is go uh, to the archives of the Herald News and read the, the ongoing stories of what happened. And, and, you know, you had one guy go to jail, one, one guy, you know, he had a few people resign. There was all kinds of, you know, there was all kinds of bribes and kickbacks. And it was, a, it was an absolute mess. And for them to, 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 to say, look, it's bad enough to say that, you know, if you, if you tried to just push it away like they always do, say, oh, forget about it, that was in the past. But to, to, but to accuse you of, of, of not being, of lying, I mean, that was one of the darkest days uh, in, in the history of, of the Fall River School Department because there were people that, were, that had very high positions in the school department that, that were, you know, indicted and, and had, uh, you know, were guilty of, of taking kickbacks and bribes. And, you know, the record shows that one man, you know, Alan Jerabak, went to jail. So, and a, and a lot of other people resigned. So, I mean, it's just crazy. Revisionist history is always great. You know, it's, but, you know, that's the problem, you know, and, and people Green. don't realize it. Yeah, and it's also people because Pythagoras, the guy who, cre who created the Pythagorean theorem, but also was a philosopher, said many, many years ago, man is the measure of all things. And he's, it's true, because if you translate that into common English, it means that the winner gets to write the history. And then that's not even true, because after the winner writes the history, 40 years later, some <laughs> guy that's back and some politician will then try to say, that actually didn't happen. I mean, we see it today with the Holocaust. There are people who deny that the Holocaust exists, uh, even occurred. So, you know, I mean, yeah, get a, get a little bit more specific on that. See, tell us exactly what some of these these detractors supposedly <laughs> said. I'm, I'm really interested. Well, I've been, you know, I've been called a liar. Um, you know, you don't have your facts straight. Uh, make sure you have this together. All you want to do is is spew these lies and this hate. And you're all you, know, you have nothing good to say. Why don't you move out of Fall River if you don't like it so much? You know, we've heard this over and over again, Chip. And I mean, I'm not even going to get into some of the other stuff, but. You know, some people came back and said, I remember that when I walked through the school, the day it opened in 1978, it, the building was falling apart already. You know, I mean, but that they're all wrong because this one gentleman, which I think was funny because he was told, why don't you go out and get a job and, you know, be informed? And the gentleman turned around and said, I do have a job. I graduated Durfee and I'm college educated and I'm a therapist. And after I got my degree, I moved back to Fall River. Well, no wonder you move back to Fall River because you get the mass health cards going nuts and you got all your, your, your crazies and your drug addicts and alcoholics and everything else that's in Fall River. You, you got a, a, a ready stream of clientele and customers. This is, what, this is what happens though. They don't like what you're saying and this is what we go through on this show all the time. Nisa's new to this, uh, mm -hmm. uh, being on the show directly. Uh, but you know, you're going to be barraged with the hate and the... And, you know, you guys don't have anything nice to say. You have nothing uh, positive to say. Hey, if there's something positive to say, we'll be more than happy to share it. Well, Lisa's going to get some heat later. She's learning quickly. But I like complimenting you guys every day. I always say something nice, right? Yes, you do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Off camera. <laughs> no, no, but it, no, you, like I said, you, you get up to speed with fall. Right. Over, and, and you're appalled by some of the things you see. But you can't really make in-depth comments yet. You haven't been around. But right. I'm sure that... You know, if you made, you, but, but you got a really good deal, I got to say, Nisa, because now if you say anything bad about Providence, most of the Providence people don't get this show <laughs> unless they're looking at YouTube. <laughs> so they're not going to crucify you that's like we get crucified. That's but, a good point. That's but, a good point. But no, you, it's going to be, you know, you're going to find out that as soon as you say anything in this city, and, you know, I mean, it's human nature. Mm -hmm. it, you know, it's, it's just like, you know, the city council. They don't want to hear us, so they try to take our ability to speak away. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that's the key. What is the first thing 
that anybody who wants to control the people do. They take away, they take away the books, they stifle their ability of free speech, mm -hmm. and they attempt to, to, to take away and, and all the education because the educational factor the educational piece, as we said it before, and it was kind of refreshing. I mean, I don't watch Ma, Bill Ma. I don't watch Ma too much, but I flipped it on the other yesterday, and, I, and he just happened to be talking about that drug guy, so I I held it on there. But they had a and and I mean, boy, talk about a show that like if they have a cooking show here, I won't show up, so because I don't cook. But uh, they had an astrophysicist but on there. We can there. eat. We can show oh, up. Oh yeah, they had an astrophysicist on, and they were talking about things. And Ma was talking about how the electorate is clueless <laughs> and, and how we should do this about the politician and that about the politician. And this guy said something. I said, wow, we said it first. He said, you know, I'm not going to condemn any politician. He said, the way I look at it, it's my job to educate the people. And once they're educated, the politicians won't be able to get away with this stuff. And you know something? That's what we're trying to say here. That's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to make sure that, look, we tell people, look, don't believe what we say, but go out and research it. Get involved. You know, start looking for something and start educating yourself about what this stuff. And the reality is, as much as they don't like it, if you don't learn from history, you're doomed to repeat it. Mm -hmm. And here we see again. I mean, it's not Durfee. Durfee's falling apart. But look at the Henry Lord School. That's the newest school, right? That place was leaking. The floors were coming up, you know, before they opened the doors. I mean, we can't build anything, you know? I mean, we could get two five-year-olds with an erector set, and they could build a school better than Fall River. You know, that's the reality, you know? I mean, look, government can't do anything right. And anybody who believes that the government does anything right has to be committed to a mental institution because the fact is, look, you look at the big dig, you look at everything they built. You go to Las Vegas, they build a billion dollar hotel in a year and it stands for decades. You come to Fall River, they spend hundreds of millions of dollars on something and it's fallen apart before they open the doors. You look at the Braga Bridge, they've been working on that thing for 30 years. And they saw, that's the government in action. They built Japan after the earthquake. 90% of the roads in Japan were functional in under a month after they had a massive earthquake that devastated the country. And you look at this country, you know, if you build, if you build a backyard shed and the government takes it over, it'll be a 20-year project and they'll have $17 million <laughs> worth of cost overruns. <laughs> So. You know, it's 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 so true. Nisi, you laugh, but I mean, you know, this is what it is. And but, you know this happens in Providence. Yeah. I'm sure you can give us yeah. some examples in Providence. I'll give you an example. Prairie Avenue, just, just stay away from Prairie Avenue. <laughs> South, South Providence overall, where I grew up, is just... Um, it's been neglected. Well, and South, it still has South Providence is tough, period. I yeah. mean, but you know, interestingly enough, uh, anyone who has a complaint about the way that we present our show, please send your complaints to Bill Maher at HBO.com. <laughs> <laughs> because he's doing the same thing we are. The only difference is he's not being vilified for it, and he's making millions of dollars a year. Oh, he so, is being vilified by the right, but I mean, <laughs> he's also being worshipped by the left. Exactly. So. <laughs> so it's very interesting. But we do have uh, to make sure that the special announcement of the day is made, and let's bring that right up on the screen. And Ooh. it's the People's Debate. Yippee. Wednesday, October 28th, 6 p.m., doors open at 5.30. The People's Debate is your debate. The questions come from the people and are presented to the candidates. And this debate, this pre-election debate, will be moderated by none other than our famous Nisa Vinyas. <laughs> <laughs> And we've given her a whip and a chair. Yes, we are. And um, it's going to be very interesting to see how this turns out. Please send your questions that you would like to ask to the candidates to debate at scstonline.com. I'm expecting thousands of questions, and they're going to keep the board <laughs> working very hard. Good luck. So please be sure that those uh, questions come in, and uh, we know exactly what you want asked. We've already had requests from the candidates, the mayoral candidates, 
on what they would like the questions to be and how they would like the debate to go. As I've explained to them, I'm only one voice. There is a board that has to meet and the final debate format will be sent out sometime next week to the candidates. And it will not change from that format. Um, we are currently looking at the possibility of doing a Lincoln-Douglas type debate in the second half of the debate, which will be each candidate gets to ask the other candidate a question and you know give them a little bit of time to rebut it as well. So it will be interesting to see how the board comes up with if they want to do that or not. Um, I know that our, our colleagues over at the Herald News are attempting to do something also very similar. Now, the debate that was scheduled for Wednesday, October 7th, here at Bristol Community College, um, put on by WSAR, has been canceled. Uh, one of the candidates, uh, mayoral candidate Jason Correa, uh, declined appearance. We don't have the exact reason why, but he declined to appear for that debate. Um, I think that that's probably, you know, a loss to the voters. Uh, but again, there are going to be two or three other debates um, where Mr. Correa and Mr. Sutter will have the opportunity to present their stance and to present their forms. So I think it's going to be interesting to see how that works out. Well, it truly is. Look, let, let me make it clear from at my position of this is it, it, this is going to be the people's debate. It's not going to be, you know, there have been questions about uh, political candidates in the past getting questions prior to when we had debates and people were reading answers from from uh, texts that they had already written up. Uh, that's happened on numerous debates. It's not going to happen here. Uh, the questions are going to come from the people. You know, it's not the people's debate if the candidates get to submit the questions. You know, it, it's truly the people's debate when the people submit the questions. So we're going to, the people's questions will be asked. It's what the people want to know, not what the politicians want to answer, the questions they want to answer. And, you know, as far as, uh, you know, Mr. Carrad bypassing the debate, I think it's an individual preference. I think, uh, you know, I don't know the reasons, but, I mean, I also know that the, the WSAI has some of, uh, Sam Sutter's transition team as hosts, they have, a, you know, the owner of the station is probably a Sutter supporter, and he probably felt that that debate would not be fair, and uh, that's his own personal, uh, and he's, he is going to debate, it's not that he doesn't want to debate, I think he was probably uh, not comfortable with that forum. Everybody has a different type of personality. If it was me, I wouldn't care if Sam Sutter was the moderator. You know, I'd go in there and I'd blow the station up during the debate. You know, and, but that's me because everybody's different. You know, I'm confrontational by nature. So the fact is that, look, uh, he didn't. He didn't choose. You know, I, I think this is kind of like Photogate. It's much to do about nothing, and they're creating an issue because they didn't go. He didn't go into you know, foreign territory, and some people will not, you know, will not go into enemy territory. They, you know, they'll, they'll want to pick their own battleground, and Sun Tzu, actually, if you look at the art of war, he's picking the battleground, and kudos to him. And a lot of the public has told me they're glad that he gave the, he gave the, uh, the bird to WSAR, because they're not happy with the biasness of their reporting. So, you know, we have differing opinions, but the bottom line is, the bottom line is, he has agreed to debate two or three times, so the public will know. I agree. And Nisa, how are you going to handle that? Because that's going to be your first time out on the, the table, but you only got a couple of seconds. <laughs> I'm going to do great. I know you're going to. That's it. That's the way to be. You're going to be great. So, <laughs> so uh, again, forward, fabulous. please send your questions in to debate at scstonline.com. And there's our music to let us know. That's the end of our show. Hey, it's been great to be with you. Stay angry and vote. Nisa, you were quiet today. We want no, more out of you on Wednesday. those questions, and um, you'll hear a lot more of me now. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Promises, promises.